of the ship. We are out on the water line today to do a little mud lurking around. Here's this big old ship coming out underneath the Carquinas. And then this is an actual shipwreck. And then we have a brickyard here. It looks like a thousand torn down. Look at all this dirt. Yeah, so the ground made out of a shingle basically. Just mermaid tears and brick and stuff. And then this big old thing. Give us some shots of that. And these were all pure buildings and structures and industrial stuff. So we thought we'd look around a little bit. We have the detectors we might detect in the park up here. All that, and you're invited along. And off we go. Let's look for some micro details. The bricks are kind of cool, huh? The bricks are way cool. That means that there was some serious brick structures here. Well, every river in California and this whole thing comes out right here. So. But yeah, there's okay. big old chunks of coal laying around. Wow. And then these must be these steam tanks or whatever, the steam engines of, uh, yeah, the broilers are what the ship was. It's low enough tide to where we can actually walk out. There's some big dark old glass. And see this thing. I guess we get to stand on the shipwreck. Looks like people have made a causeway out of bricks here. That's a bolt. <laughs> Ooh, watch out. Very slippery. Very slippery. Very slippery. Wow. So the ground is just made out of bits and bobs of the ship. This is all the metal of it that's turned back into rock or into pieces of metal and then uh, I see wood here so we still have wood we still have the spikes that went through it and the pipes and the broilers what do you think the paddle boat are those the paddles I guess so probably right Big old paddle boats on the side of it, and then the broiler. Because why else would it have two weird axle things that stuck out that look like that? It is a paddle boat. Do you see them? This is where the paddles went. In here. Yeah, it's a big old steam paddle boat. Really cool. I'll go ahead and get muddy here. The CNH Sugar Factory is right here. So that's where you get your CNH sugar from. Get shipped over from Oahu. I have stood in their fields in the center of Oahu. On the Carquinas Bridge. In Sacramento, the Yuba River, the Feather River, countless others all converge into these Carquinas marshlands and then run out here underneath that bridge to the San Francisco Bay and then straight up beyond to the Pacific Ocean. Inside the broiler, what do you see? Woo! We won't step out there. That's deep mud. I see railroad spikes. But pretty incredible. All the pieces of the iron. Not much left ever. This must be uh, I guess a chain. Going around the cog. Turning, turning. Wow. And of course, California's first 
um, place where our first, ship, our first shipyard in San Francisco Bay is directly across the water here too. It's a historical spot. This is all that remains of the wreck of the Garden City. She was built and launched by the Collier Brothers Shipyard of New York on June 20th, 1879. The 1,080-ton ship was more than 200 feet long, powered by a 625-horsepower steam engine driving twin paddle wheels. There was a crew of 19, and it was originally owned by the South Pacific Coast Railroad, which was later bought by the Southern Pacific Railroad. Garden City was built with a three-foot narrow-gauge track on the main deck to carry freight cars to San Francisco, but she could also carry passengers as a relief ferry when either of the other two ferries needed repairs. Southern Pacific retired Garden City in 1922 but traffic remained so heavy through the 1920s that the boat was repeatedly pulled out of retirement for temporary service while other boats needed repair. Her last run was in 1929. The old ferry was moored at a fishing resort in Eckley, California. Eckley is gone. This is the site now being part of Carquina Strait Regional Shoreline Park. It also served later in its life as a fishing resort until it was officially abandoned sometime in the late 1960s or early 70s. During a mysterious shore fire brush fire in 1983, it was set alight and burned to the waterline. Just its broilers and these metal fragments and wooden posts are all that can be seen now. Oh, the pieces of the iron. Not much left ever. This must be, uh, this is a chain going around the cog, turning, turning. Pretty cool, pretty cool. There's the other axle sticking out that way. Fishing lure, big old rainbow trout. We'll take that. Why not? I'll use that in my tackle box. Big old pieces of probably a poison bottle. Ooh, look at that. Beautiful. Murly stuff there. Just looking for details. Chunks of granite pushed down here. These are where they got drilled into to break them apart originally. And they were used for who knows what. And now they're being used to rip wrap the bank and keep it from eroding. Look at that. Far from the basilisk they were born from. Two foundations or something that probably came out here and connected to these type of things. There's the old ship. Glad we got to see it above the water. 
I spotted that the other day on a Google Quest. Now we're just looking around. Here are all the little pieces. There is a railroad that traces this whole thing. So, there is the inevitable railroad spike in the debris. I'm amazed. Not really, but just constantly amazed. I would say the entire San Francisco Bay is lined with bricks. That's not an exaggeration. I mean, lined. Those are all pieces that are just piled up all around the whole thing. Everywhere where somebody could dump some, they dumped them. It's amazing to me that more of the stuff wasn't reused, but I've just seen the fire process, so when things get destroyed or need to be built quick, the things that are in the way get removed quickly and thrown in places, so yeah, it's just amazing. Okay, a little beach under the old eucalyptus. No bottle tops. Big old steel spike. Just kind of zigzagging on the beach. Sometimes you get areas where little dinghies fell apart. There'll be cute little brass nails. And you just never know all the history of everything that ever came through this part of the bay. So there's what we know about and then there's the stuff we don't know about. Could have been a chest of gold coins that washed up here. A lot of plates in this particular section. A lot of dishware. That big green lens. Wow, that's really pretty. And the bridge in the background. Let me try and clean this up. Pieces of iron, wondering what was here, watching it turn back into stone. Here's a little piece of copper finally. So that's a something. Probably more of a modern something. It's got the hexagon bolts on there. See how big this structure was here once. I'm just kind of working behind it. There's big old iron spikes. I would save one to restore, but the salt water has got down into these so far that is literally to restore iron uh, from salt water as a whole process of electrolysis itself, and otherwise it just falls to pieces, even in regular water, let alone salt water. So you would have to really be in love with the object to try and save it, otherwise it's basically as whole as it is going to be where it lies. Cut bones, somebody's meal. Look how many spikes there are laying about. Oop, we're collecting a lot of lead. And hooks back, that's good. Is that an old bottle? It's a piece of an old bottle. Lead, lead, lead. You see it? Look at all this jumble. Look how far we walked. Do you see it? I 
Oh, it's a screw top. You do see it. Never mind. We're gonna leave that there. It's a 70s pint. Bummer. Beautiful old uh, insulator. What's left of it? It's some gorgeous stuff. Don't know if I'm gonna bring that or not. Looks like we're getting into a little zone where there's more objects though. Here's a little brass bolt right underneath your pilings and stuff. Cow bones. Yeah. See, leather brass. Something that's not a rusty creature. And that's more of a cork top, but it could be a wine bottle. Which are still cork tops. Of course. So where you slow down, there's another bottom of a big old brown bottle. Put those two together. And we'll look around a little bit here. There's a house boat. I'm just not sure if it's modern or... Maybe that was a boat. Let's go look at this. If there's nobody home. And maybe if they're home. Another insulator here. And a copper plate. Probably whatever was here required some electricity and stuff to run it. And uh, these are part of the workings of that. Some of the last things to go in the building are the things in the walls. Here's another one. Have your copper plate. You rinse those off. Bits and bobs and things. I was trying to figure out what I was looking at at this camp. And it's a, well it's a boat, so you have the top of a boat here, pieces of other riprap, wash and stuff, and then you have these posts and pieces that look like they were probably part of whatever went to here, you know, the interaction with, with the train tracks behind and stuff, you can even see bricks coming out way down here at this layer or maybe whoever's home this is or was they uh, they did that but this is artistic hopefully nobody's home inside here they don't encroach upon their reality too much but yeah they took bags filled up with sand there's a little deck in there And there's the retainment, and then on top of that, the houseboat pieces. It's fairly ingenious. It gives it this overall real homey look. As far as a, a camp goes, not bad, not bad. And on the other side of the bay, of course, more modern version of that. Keep poking around here before the water comes up on us and then we're going to go detect up on all the flat spots around here. This should be kind of cool. Got a good feeling about it. It's such a good feeling, I don't know if the mom followed us. She was right behind us and then she kept saying something about we should detect and then now I don't see her. There's another cork top, look at the rainbow on that one. Yay! I'm not collecting these these pieces. I have uh, more whole pieces as far as what I've found so far. But I'd love to see the little edge of a coin. Or, and then you let your mind spin, and that's part of the fun. I guess we need to walk back soon to make sure she's okay and she's not on a hoard.
I'm up here in what may have been like a house site long ago, but the grass is literally as tall as my machine. So it's like wild oats and thistles and stuff. So just having a hard time getting through it, but I did find one signal after a bunch of holes. Managed to get it open. Oh wow. Look at that. I didn't realize what I was showing you. That is awesome. Wow. Wow. Okay. So, I guess that means that, the, <coughs> that uh, we're in the right spot. Wow. Okay. That's good stuff. <sighs> I think the mom went to dig, uh, there's uh, brick buildings down there and flat spots and all kinds of stuff. All I have is this big old shovel and um, yeah, so I'm trying to stick to the more wild zones because I don't want to be down in the manicured area with crazy shovel. But we are unskunked. Make sure I'm looking at the right thing this time. Yep, 1984. But another dime. I have round in the hole, but I believe it's an eagle. And because it's not shiny, you know it's pretty modern. 1996. That's a quarter though. Wow, you know what that is? I'm over here digging uh, by the old brick building and the railroad. That's from the kind of penny. It's not really a penny, but it looks like it was a, a copper quarter. And some sort of clag going on, maybe even a dime. That is really cool. We put coins on the, the railroad tracks and they drive by and crush it. At some point, here we go. Railroad tracks. Another train penny. So these might even just spit sideways that far off the tracks. But that's cool. This cool little, uh, I don't know. Clues to me. I see irises on the back slope. I see century plant, sente plant. I see walnut trees in the background. I see that this was probably a little house site. That that might have even been some sort of little driveway because those cypress take a little while to grow. And that this was probably a flat spot, not made for a bench, but rather a little house. You can actually see the iris growing up here in the background, all down that slope. So we're going to detect all around here. Coming the iris is oh, even an old cactus, and laying there. See. Good sounding signal. That is an older brass ring of some sort. Happy. Happy. Piece of maybe the tip of a pen. An old writing pen. Definitely copper. Definitely aged. 1962 penny. One cent amongst the uh, irises. You can tell there's a flat spot here, but there's also fresh dig holes that aren't ours. But I did just pull a quarter, 
so you never know we're just gonna keep going and work down to the shoreline and all that sit down probably modern it's not silver was well, just a little ways away from the quarter there so there's hope that not everything got hunted out of here. 79. So I just keep pulling uh, dimes out of here and quarters out of here. So even though there's dig holes here, it just goes to show you do not uh, be dismayed. Just go ahead and swing what you got and see if you can find something that was missed. We're finding a lot. That's where we were. And those flat spots carved in the back with all the old vegetation and iris and now we are behind these really big eucalyptus on this flat spot 1977 penny it's like a fresh drop good sign no porcelain button a little three hole all chipped away but it's a relic for today that's pretty cool these are from a ways back. I just found my second low button. There's another little either bone or porcelain button just floating around here. Second little white porcelain button just laying in this stuff. Yeah. That's what was inside the wool sock. You weren't joking. That's a really old doorknob though. That's where you turn it and it locks it and it pins. That might have actually been off that old stone building. That's cool. Nice relic. It shows its age. It might even have words or something in it there. It kind of looks like there's a word there. Good work. You ready to go drive and explore a little bit? Yeah. Congratulations. Uh, this looks like it was a plaster plug to something kind of rounded and whatever. Not a rock, maybe a rock, I don't know. Plaster. But it looked like it plugged something at one point. Uh, two railroad spikes, tiny metal things washed up in the beach. Um, one good seashell, a lovely piece of green folded glass. Um, a nice piece of pink granite with sparkles in it. This ring up metal, it's a rock. Two sinkers, one quarter, three dimes, two zinkins, no silver. Um, this gave my heart, I thought it was a coin. It's a shaved off bolt. Um, this little thing looks familiar, I can't remember what it's for. Me neither, but it is something. It looks familiar. A grommet, um, no old coins really. And then the quest goes on. It was a great day. And so I got one old thing. I don't know what it is. It was in the corner by the irises and stuff. I got junk. This was pretty cool. This is somebody's handmade bait holder, I think, or uh, or whatever. Chum holder. Oh. Sinker, two plastic buttons, two uh, ceramic buttons or bone, either way, but it shows that things wash up on that shore and the clothes rot away and the buttons stay there and churn forever and ever. That one's actually been napped away from being there for so long. There went some more. And three ten cent pieces, a 1977 penny. Um, Bunch of other pennies, three quarters. A train penny from the tracks, so that's like a relic. And a train probably nickel or quarter wow. from the tracks. Yeah, I thought that was cool because cool. we went to see the tracks in the thing, you know. So, blue mermaid here. Aqua, very rare piece of sea glass. I lost my glass. piece, yeah. Oh. Well, that's probably it. <laughs> no, it was different looking. And then our 19... When I picked this up, showed the camera, I thought it said 87, and, and then through the camera, it said 47, so I realized we'd found the silver, so. Woohoo! Yep. 
S, San Francisco. So, found in the bay it was made in. We were right across the water from San Francisco. So, where it was minted. Yes, 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 that was, that was what it was. And we got to explore where we go. Port Costa after that, and uh, off down to the end of all those roads. So we found out it was on that side of the bay. And looked at the details. I hope you all enjoyed. And we'll see you next time. The quest goes on. The quest goes on.